hey guys, today we're in the lab looking at the electrolysis of sodium chloride. Here we're going to do the electrolysis of sodium chloride. So I've got some in the beak here. I've got my electrodes attached up to a power pack, positive and negative, and then I've got a bulb in here so we can see when it is working. So here's my electrolysis setup. I've put the electrodes in there. Um, it's really important to make sure they're not touching. I'm just going to put the power on, and you'll see that the light has come on. If I just lift this out of the solution you'll see that that goes off because the circuit's been broken um so i'm just going to leave that to work and we will see what happens you can see coming off the positive electrode here there are some bubbles so i'm just going to test this with some damp blue litmus paper and we will see what happens to the litmus paper So over here at the positive electrode, you can see that the blue, damp blue litmus paper has turned pink, indicating that chlorine is being released. And you can see here at the negative electrode, we have more bubbles being released. Um, this is hydrogen gas coming off. Okay, that is your electrolysis of sodium chloride. When we have the electrolysis of sodium chloride solution, the ions that we put into solution are sodium ions and chlorine ions. Now this one is a little bit more complicated because there are some other ions in play here. We have the ions that come from water. So we also have hydrogen ions and we have hydroxide ions. This is just a very, very small proportion of water that dissociates. So at the positive electrode, that is our anode. If we just look over here, we have panic, positive anode, negative is cathode. At our positive electrode, what we are going to get is chlorine gas, and that is Cl2. So that is going to go over here to our positive electrode, and we are going to see a gas given off. And we can test to see that bleaches damp litmus paper. Um, at our negative... cathode we are not as you might expect going to get sodium what we are going to get is hydrogen gas so we are going to get a second gas given off at our cathode and we can click that um, and test that it gives a squeaky pop now still in solution we are going to get sodium hydroxide. Um, that's going to be the joining together of the two ions that we have left over. Sodium hydroxide um, is also known as bleach. So let's have a look at our um, half equations. So at our um, cathode, we are taking chlorine ions so negative ions and we're turning them into chlorine gas which is cl2 gases always go around in twos now we have to balance our charges so we need to put some electrons over this side and we need to balance um what we actually have as well so if we have two chlorines over on the right hand side we have to have two on the left hand side if we have two negative charges on the left hand side we need to have two electrons on the um, right hand side as well and if we look at oil rig oxidation is loss reduction is gain this is loss of electrons so it is going to be oxidation if we look at what is going on with hydrogen 
we have hydrogen ions and that is going to be turning into hydrogen gas. Now if we have two hydrogens on the right hand side we need to have two hydrogens on the left hand side. The right hand side is neutral so we need the left hand side to be neutral as well. So to make it um, neutral we need to add in some electrons. Now if you've got two positive charges we need two negative charges. Now reduction is gain. This is gaining electrons so this is reduction of hydrogen. Now you need to know the uses for the various things um, that we have here. Chlorine um, can be used in drinking water, so the water that comes out of your taps to kill um, the bacteria in swimming pools, also to kill the bacteria. It can be used to make hydrochloric acid or it can be used to make PVC which stands for polyvinyl chloride. Hydrogen gas can be used to make ammonia. It can be used in hydrogenation or it can be used as a fuel for things. Sodium hydroxide can be used to make soap or in the production of paper. So this is one of the more complicated sets of electrolysis that you need to learn, but it's actually a really, really useful one. And once you remember the fact that the ions from water get involved and it's hydrogen produced at the negative electrode, it's not that complicated.